I've now covered multiple best teams for Pokemon Radical Red, but Pokemon Radical Red 4.0 has vastly changed what truly defines the best team for these games. With Generation 9 being added into the mix, there's now plenty of new moves and Pokemon to consider for your run, and it's honestly gotten difficult to even just use 6 Pokemon anymore to beat these games. I think despite all the hurdles Radical Red has thrown at us with its new update, I've managed to craft a new best team of 6 Pokemon without using any Legendaries or even Paradox Pokemon. I do need to add though, I will be adding in a few honorable mentions, since I definitely almost caved and added a Pokemon or two just to make some earlier boss fights a bit easier when you're low on Pokemon. With all that out of the way, let's find out what starter we'll be using this time around. Also, if you're into hardcore Nuzlocks, check out my Heart Gold Randomizer Hardcore Nuzlocke over on Mist Magius. I will leave that in the description below. Last time we played through a Radical Red adventure, we started off with the often overlooked Johto starter, Chikorita. While anyone unfamiliar with Radical Red might think this was done to make my run exponentially harder, in Radical Red, Meganium has a few buffs with the new secondary typing of Fairy and a new hidden ability, Triage, which makes Meganium one of the best grass types in the game. Meganium also gave us one of the few viable Fairy types in these games, and arguably the only viable one outside of maybe Mega Mawile if we ban Legendaries. But what if I told you, we now have access to an even stronger grass type starter than Meganium. While Meganium still offers plenty to our team, there's one single grass type with so much offensive potential that it's able to breeze past most trainers with its countless stab options. The starter I ended up choosing for our run actually ended up being one of our new generation 9 Pokemon, Sprigatito. Sprigatito offers a lot to our team, with the first major thing being your speed. With a high speed stat of 123, Meow Skirata will be an absolutely insane offensive Pokemon to start with on our team. I know the last team we used didn't feature many fast Pokemon, with our fastest being Delphox, but we had multiple priority users to balance that out. Meow Skirata will also still give us some strong priority in the form of Sucker Punch. Meowskarata also uses its hidden ability Protean to take advantage of its wide move pull and gain stab for moves like Low Kick, Triple Axel, U-Turn, Play Rough, and many others. The biggest benefit though would be its signature move Flower Trick, which is a base 70 grass type move with a 100% chance to crit the opponent, unless they have an ability like Shell Armor. This helps Meow Skirata exponentially with dealing strong damage to the opponent's team due to its already high attack stat and protein ensuring you're going to one-shot most Pokemon in the game. Meow Skirata is kind of tricky, because its move pool and ability, you can't really just have one single best move set. But I found Flower Trick, Low Kick, and Sucker Punch on nearly every move set I ran through the game. With the fourth move changing from U-Turn, Knock Off, Bullet Punch, and Triple Axel depending on the match. The fourth move typically was U-Turn, but Knock Off was brought against Sabrina, Bullet Seed typically was for Sash Leads, and Triple Axel only was useful against strong Dragon Trainers like Lance and Blue. I can't really think of a better starter choice than Meow Skirata for this run. And while most grass starters will provide success, I do think this is the clear best choice. I do want to mention, we will be adding one more starter to our team, but we have to choose our grass starter early on because of the Brock and Misty battles we face so soon on our journey. And if we chose any water or fire starter right now, we are putting ourselves at a huge disadvantage. Before I get into our second team member, I do need to address a specific feature of the game that makes using only 6 Pokemon even possible in the first place, being the Wonder Eggs. The Wonder Eggs are a set of eggs you can buy for 5,000 in Pewter, Cerulean, and Viridian City, and they make up for 3 of our 6 Pokemon today. You can get a lot of game-changing Pokemon significantly earlier in your run thanks to these eggs but there are definitely some checks and balances put into these. For example, Slowpoke is not available in any of these eggs, but Galar Slowpoke is available in all of them. 
While Slowpoke will eventually join our team because of this restriction, we actually have a very specific order for our next three encounters from these eggs. While you technically can find our next three encounters in all these wonder eggs, your next encounter for this team has to be Tadbulb from our Pewter City Egg. Tadbulb actually does offer a few key advantages here, and choosing it before our other wonder eggs means we have a fly resist to help our team with Falconer, who is a required boss fight before Brock. Belly Bolt offers a lot to a normal playthrough, and it essentially became a better Mega Ampharos for our team. You're going to struggle a bit when this is just a Tadbulb, since your damage is rather weak. But the games do give you early access to Electroweb in Viridian Forest in order to at least give Tadbulb a stronger electric attack than Thundershock. Once you've evolved into Belly Bolt, though, you're able to handle so many random Pokemon in these games. This is thanks to your ability Electromorphosis, allowing you to deal twice as much damage with your next electric move after you've been attacked. This makes Belly Bolt a phenomenal tank, especially when partnered with Parabolic Charge, which is essentially just an electric type draining kiss. I mostly threw on the electric type to help with Falconer and Misty while also giving us a bulky Pokemon with only a single weakness. But I was shocked to find out Belly Bolt was capable of handling Zacian Crowned 1v1 when fighting Bruno. With the moveset of Muddy Water, Teleport, Parabolic Charge, and Slack Off, you genuinely will never need another moveset on this Pokemon for your entire run. I'd add on a Citrus Berry in most battles in order to better support your signature ability. And Belly Bolt was easily one of the biggest surprises to this team, and I couldn't imagine you finding a better electric type for your journey. If you are struggling with Brock and Falconer, I do have a suggestion for our first honorable mention, which is Sandile. Just like with our 3.0 team, Sandile is an amazing option with Intimidate to help against Falconer's Rufflet, and overall, it's a good option against Brock. You probably won't need this for any future fights, since we'll get a more permanent ground type later on. But if you decide to get Chikorita over Sprigatito, then this could also be a strong ground type for your team instead, since Crocodile will be an absolute powerhouse with moves like Wicked Blow and Earthquake in its arsenal. I do believe, though, that if you end up needing to use Sandile at all, that it will have served its purpose by the time you've beaten Brock. We do have our second Wonder Egg to go over, which mostly will serve the role of a free switch in Pokemon until we fully evolve it. For our Cerulean Wonder Egg, we have Frigabax, giving us a phenomenal pseudo-legendary and a strong wall breaker. For now, though, it's a bit early to use it, and we won't get much success from it until Silphco but it does have one important function for your team. Frigabax, despite lacking in damage, will allow you an easier time bringing other Pokemon like Belly Bolt so they can avoid taking damage. While we do have several other egg encounters to get, Frigabax's Dragon and Ice typing should at least, if need be, match up better into Misty, specifically with the Ice Stab being good against her Clodzire. I wouldn't expect much from it though until Silphco. Baxcalibur will turn into one of the most powerful Pokemon in Radical Red. Boasting an incredible ability in Thermal Energy, you're one of the few physical attackers who can not only avoid burns altogether, but outright take advantage of it. Anytime an opponent uses a Fire-type move of any kind, such as Flamethrower, Flare Blitz, or Will-O-Wisp, you'll raise your physical attack by one stage. This causes Baxcalibur to easily defeat most enemies, unless they're a Steel-type Pokemon, since even a lot of the fairies you'll encounter have low physical defense. With options like Icicle Spear and Glaive Rush, you'll be able to shatter most enemies, and in case they survive a turn, you may also want to give Baxcalibur Ice Shard for a priority option to pick off enemies who only have a bit of HP remaining. Most options for your fourth move won't really matter, but I personally used Crunch since it gave me a good way to hit Mega Metagross and Jirachi, both of which you'll encounter at the end of your journey. But I didn't really find another move worth using here. You could probably invest in a ground type move like Earthquake or Stomping Tantrum, but I never felt like Baxcalibur needed it. So using Crunch, which was one of its level up moves, more than sufficed. This team also has plenty of other means to handle still type Pokemon. So your Baxcalibur should be in a strong position to take on most bosses and break their teams in half. If you're unsure what item to use, I recommend the Never Meltice, the Dragon Fang, or the Loaded Dice on Baxcalibur. 
I found that the Never Melt Ice was mostly useful for boosting Ice Shard damage. Meanwhile, Dragon Fang gave Baxcalibur a much stronger Glaive Rush, and Loaded Dice made Icicle Spear a more reliable move. Regardless of the item choice though, Baxcalibur will surely carry your team to great heights. We do have another egg encounter to go over, which actually has two locations to find around this point in your adventure. I personally got it from the Vermilion City Wonder Egg, but you can also encounter this thanks to the Sevi eggs as well. At this point in the story, we finally have access to the Prism Scale, an item that will grant us the ability to obtain a Sevi Milotic, which is an extremely powerful ground and fairy Pokemon. This typing alone is already a phenomenal offensive and defensive typing, and allows Sevi Milotic to stand out among the crowd. With immunities to Dragon and Electric, as well as resistances to Fighting, Rock, Bug, and Dark, Sevi Milotic quickly establishes itself as a strong defensive piece. Your typing also hits Electric, Rock, Steel, Fire, Poison, Dragon, fighting, and dark for super effective damage, with poison and steel being especially noteworthy, as these would be the two types most other fairies would be weak to. Sevi Milotic's stats are also strong, since they're basically the same as regular Milotic. The only change between them is Sevi Milotic gives up 5 base points in its speed, which it adds to its special attack. What makes Sevi Milotic truly stand out though, is how you'll gain access to one of the only ground types with reliable recovery. While options like Gastrodon and Quagsire can use Recover as well, they can't usually put up as much of a fight offensively, which mostly comes down to Sevi Milotic's move pool. With options like Moonblast and Earth Power of Stabs, you can take advantage of two of the best special attacks in the entire game. Meanwhile, you'll also have strong attacks like Flip Turn, Shore Up, and Stealth Rocks at your disposal for more utility. I used Flip Turn and Shore Up for most of my early adventure, but once I got to Claire's Gym, I actually decided it was better to change Flip Turn out for hazards in order to combat Focus Sash Pokemon like Deoxys Attack and Aerodactyl while also having an easy way to break multi skill, which was present on multiple Dragonite towards the end of my run. While you definitely can make most ground types work, I think Sevi Milotic has such a unique move pull in typing that it truly is able to set itself apart from anything else in the game as both a fairy and a ground type. With our ground type on the team, you may actually be surprised we actually have one more Pokemon to add before taking on Lieutenant Surge. However, we have one more egg to get to round out our team. I did mention we had one more starter for our team, which we can actually get in Celadon. After the SSN, you'll have access to Cut, which means you can go all the way through Rock Tunnel and get yourself a starter egg in Celadon City. You need one of the red, green, blue, or yellow shards in exchange for a fire, grass, water, or electric type egg. For today's team, we'll be using a red shard to get ourselves another Generation 9 starter Pokemon, Fuecoco. While Delphox, similar to Meganium, still has plenty of viability in Radical Red 4.0, Skeledurge might honestly be one of the best fire starters in existence. This only gets even more noticeable in Radical Red, since a lot of later boss fights use some of the strongest Ubers Pokemon. Skeledurge actually has an incredible presence in the Ubers tier, and for multiple months this generation has even landed itself in the top 10 for usage, mainly due to its ability to combat box arts such as Zacian Crowned, thanks to its hidden ability Unaware. Seeing how we will need to fight a Zacian, as well as some other standout Ubers level Pokemon like Pheromosa and Calyrex Ice Rider, it might be a good idea to add this to our team. Despite being most known for its presence in Ubers to wall box arts, Skeledurge still has plenty of battles it'll be impactful for in the rest of your journey. For starters, Torch Song, which is Skeledurge's signature move, boosting your special attack by one stage every time you use it. There's no drawbacks for this move, and it takes advantage of your Fire Stab to deal immense damage. I paired this with Will-O-Wisp, Hex, and Slackoff in order to handle pretty much every battle in the game. I almost never used anything besides Torch Song though, because a few times against Lorelei I had to use Slack Off to survive long enough while my partner attacked. This is easily one of the strongest fire attacks ever created, and while it is a bit overkill for Scarlet and Violet, and a more competitive ROM hack like Radical Red, this move feels right at home. 
Skeledirge will prove to be very useful against opponents like Erika and Sabrina, as well as Team Rocket's Ariana and most of your Elite Four run. Skeledirge is probably the best starter to choose for the late game in my eyes, and it also benefits immensely from having both Bax Calibur and Meow Skarada to handle opposing ground-type Pokémon that may otherwise try to get the upper hand against you. The team of five honestly could be enough for the majority of battles. However, we do have one more important team member to go over. Well, at least on paper. Which is our team's Mega Evolution, Mega Slowbro. Mega Slowbro provides this team with a strong physical wall, and one of the best bulky water Pokemon in the entire game. This historically has been considered one of the most essential Pokemon needed to beat the Elite Four. But it may surprise you guys to note, I actually didn't get much use out of Mega Slowbro this time around. Back when I did my team for Radical Red 3.0, Mega Slowbro was genuinely one of the most important Pokemon to my run. I found this time, however, I wasn't getting much use out of it aside from a couple of battles, with the big one being to handle the combination of Bax Calibur and Calyrex Ice from Lorelei. I don't know how I rolled Lorelei's Snow Team twice now when covering a best team. If anyone knows why this was the case, I'd love to hear about it down below, by the way. I just couldn't believe my luck that I got this matchup for our 3.0 and 4.0 best teams, as this is, in my eyes, her harder team. Moving on to what makes Mega Slowbro good though, is that this is an incredible option defensively, allowing you to have a strong water type that can not only take hits, but deal out some serious damage thanks to body press. I found this to be extremely useful in the Elite Four, where I used the moveset of Slack Off, Body Press, Teleport, and either Iron Defense or Surf, depending on the matchup. I had Iron Defense for Lorelei and Bruno, but the rest of the battles I used Surf instead, as it matched up better into Agatha. And from there, I honestly just forgot to give Mega Slowbro Iron Defense again. While Mega Slowbro was the correct sixth choice, I found enough success from Pokemon like Belly Bolt and Skeledirge to where this time around, Mega Slowbro felt more like a last resort rather than my win con in most battles. Even Bruno, whose team is typically very easily handled by Mega Slowbro, lost three of his mons, one of which was a Zacian crowned to Belly Bolt of all mons. If I needed to rely on Mega Slowbro more often, I'm sure I wouldn't be having any of this second guessing. But I think this goes to show Radical Red gave us so many new terrifying Pokemon that despite this being in my eyes the best way to run a team of six for these games, you'll have plenty of other options to choose from if you dislike anything I used. So what are some other noteworthy additions if you want to change up some Pokemon? Well, I already mentioned Sandile and Crocodile, both of which I actually almost caught exclusively to handle Falconer and Brock because I had struggled a lot beating their teams with only two Pokemon. Speaking of Pokemon we previously used, I still think you could even go as far as running that same team entirely. Ampharos, Aegislash, Crocodile, Delphox, Meganium, and Mega Slowbro all still work well together for these games. If you're trying to find some new Pokemon to use though, I'd probably start by considering either Garchomp or Goldango for your journey. Goldango is basically just a more offensive option for a steal compared to Aegislash. And while it lacks priority with Shadow Sneak, you'll still have the ability to set up and sweep a fair bit of enemies thanks to Good as Gold, which can block moves like Taunt. Meanwhile, Garchomp's offensive stab combination of Ground and Dragon provides you a strong alternative to Bax Caliber. And while you'll need to fear things like Ice Shard and Burns, Garchomp also offers a bit more versatility than just being your wall breaker. Finally, you can typically get some good use out of Weather in Radical Red. And the best weather combination in my eyes would probably be Pelipper and Mega Swampert, with Pelipper giving you a strong U-turn into Mega Swampert, allowing for an easier time sweeping through teams. Weather is mostly useful as a means to beat opposing weather, which will be prevalent in the later portions of your run. But dedicating two spaces to weather can definitely be a bit inefficient against teams like Erika. So just make sure to patch up your grass weakness if you decide to bring this duo. So that's my best team for the Radical Red 4.0 update. 
With Radical Red having over 1,000 Pokemon that you can catch for your journey, I'm sure I might have missed another Pokemon that is amazing for these games. So make sure to comment what team you guys use for your playthroughs in the comment section below. While you're on your way down there, make sure to leave a like on today's video and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be sure to cover more best team content in the future, as well as some Pokemon top 10 lists and other Pokemon discussion videos. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time.